Good morning, Michelle. Thank you for joining us this morning on the first of um, the series around attracting and retaining um, women's cricket players. And I've just got things I need to get off my screen. Um, yeah, on behalf of Legion Networks, thanks for giving up your time. And just to introduce you, and I probably won't re be able to remember all of your roles, but um, the main one that um, I you know, communicate with you mostly on is your role as a commissioner um, for AFL Barwon, but you're also an avid cricketer. So it's your cricket that um, I'm really interested in finding out from a personal point of view, from a female player, what is important about um, for clubs to know about how to retract and retain women. Now, we'll start, though. How did you get involved in playing cricket to, to begin with? Well, I played cricket, I suppose, always as a kid. You know, you're always in the backyard and having a, a bit of a, a run around all the time in summer, I suppose. Um, and then in, I can't remember exactly when it was, I was probably in early high school, um, I played a few games of cricket for the Geelong team. So I was, I didn't maintain that. And I couldn't even tell you why I didn't. Um, but I probably only played three or four games in that season and then didn't pick it up again after that. But just always really enjoyed. I love watching cricket, um, going to the games. So it's just always been, I guess, there for me. Um, so that was me as a kid. And then in terms of just lately, so I didn't play at all um, until last year. And then all of a sudden um, a friend of mine was playing and and I just saw her post something on Instagram and just joked and said, if you ever need a player, let me know. And then next week there I was, um, was playing. So that was sort of how it all eventuated with East Belmont. Yeah, great. And so when you so that so that's lesson number one is um, an Instagram post. So the power of social media. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then what was it? So and then the second lesson there probably is also friendships. Yeah. So just having someone to to be your buddy, I suppose. Yeah. And and I have a I, in the team I played in last year. Um, there was a girl I'd, I'd known since prep. So, and hadn't seen her since we finished high school, really. So that was a reconnection that was excellent. And then um, one of my mates actually that got me into playing netball at Bell Park back in 2000, she was playing. So it was sort of the same thing again. So yeah, it is it is important, definitely the, the friendship part. Yeah, sure. And if you think about your first day of going to training to start, what were the things that might've been running through your mind of, what your expectations were, were or your, um, you know, anticipations about, oh, I hope it's, I hope they're nice people or what were you thinking? Yeah, look, it, it, it was, it was a bit nervous, actually. I was, I was, I, I was feeling that I hadn't played <laughs> forever, for, you know, 15 or 20 years properly. So um, it was, and, and it, the, the bit that grabbed me, I suppose, when I first walked into training, I think it was a Thursday night, was everyone was just so friendly. Um, our coaches were excellent. So, you know, they just made you feel part of it immediately. But there wasn't any pressure on how how good anyone was. Everyone was at different levels. Um, and it was really just have a have a go. Um, you know, I knew I was going to be a bit of a ring in for the season. So um, for me, it was just, I'll just go out and, and have, a, have a bit of fun with it. Um, and the first training was excellent. It was just, you know, everyone, as I said, um, was really welcoming and and the coaches were excellent in bringing you into the group immediately. Um, I was lucky because I, I hadn't done the pre-season, I suppose, and I, I'm not sure how long that actually was. It was probably only a few weeks. So I was, I was probably one of the last to join the group, but it didn't feel like that at all, which was really good. Yeah. And uh, things like uniform and what were the expectations around what you had to wear and, and buy straight up or? Well, nothing. Um, membership was covered, uniform was covered. So um, I think I got my uniform after I started playing. I was in the field and the, and and I think it was Tom that was bringing the uniforms and it was a bit late. So, you know, that but that was fine. Um, in terms of equipment, it was all provided. So that was, that was good. But obviously with COVID now, it probably can't happen like it did last year, but we were all sharing gloves and pads and helmets and things. Um, I've since got a few of my own things um, and, and that's just obviously moving into the different way we've got to play now. Um, 
but I didn't have to worry about a thing. I just, it was just me, which was awesome. Right. And as a club, um, so the, the committee that's running the, the cricket, what, what advice would you have for, obviously they're doing lots of great things. Um, is there anything that you would think of that um, it's important for committee members to be aware of in, especially around attracting women to, to their cricket? Because a lot of cricket clubs are going for their first team this year. Um, so, you know, what words of wisdom might you give committees? Uh, look, it's it's a hard one. I think um, I, I think the things around the cost side, if you can alleviate that, that's nice. Um, it's obviously not always possible, um, but certainly for our first season, that was that was a big thing um, that you didn't have to worry about necessarily purchasing equipment, thinking, am I going to be playing this just for this season or, you know, so that was a good thing. Um, I think the involvement, and I think this came from committee level as well, but there was one night where I went to training um, and the, the senior men's teams were training as well. Um, we were given a net, you know, and for me that was a big thing, you know, that they were willing to give up one of their cricket nets for the girls to play in, um, and I thought that was awesome. We were given access to the bowling machine, um, which, you know, I thought that was really, really good. And the, there were guys from the senior team that were helping the girls, so there was that real – it didn't feel like it was a separate thing. Um, and I think that's – I think that comes from committee. You know, it's about there's a new team and we're all one club, that sort of thing. Um so that was that was definitely um, one thing that stood out for me. The other thing um, that I thought, from an in inclusion perspective, was that we were we had two teams and they were named after influential cricket women from the club. So there was that link um, back to the club and back to people that have contributed. So that was one. Um, and then about halfway through the season, they announced our playing numbers. So I was number forty four in terms of to ever played women's cricket at the club. So there was all of a sudden you felt like you were really part of it. You know, I was number 44 and I won't forget that. Um, so that was a really big thing too. Um, and that was all driven by the committee. Um, so there, there's a few things that I thought were really good going forward. Fantastic. That's, they're great ideas, yeah. aren't they, for any club? Yeah. Um, and really know. easy to do. It doesn't, yeah. that doesn't cost anything. But... There was an identity then. I felt like I was, and I always will be, part of that club. Yeah, yeah, that is brilliant. That is so good. Um, and then just lastly, is there any, um, do you know of any women that are on the committee that are driving um, the cricket? Um, and is it is it one committee or is it two committees? Like what's the structure, do you know, or, or as a player you might not? I'm not 100% sure. I definitely know that there were um that people within the teams that were on the committee so that I, I don't know if it was necessarily separate. I don't think it was. Um, mm. I also know that there were, um, you know, girls that I was playing with that they were coaching junior teams. I mean, obviously I think their kids were involved, but there was that continuity through juniors as well. Um, and there, there definitely um, has been a call out for um, just, I think the recent AGM they held that there was a call out for for us to get involved on the committee and they're really, really wanting that to happen. So I think that there's been a few um, that have jumped on board. And I, I do know that one of the girls we played with last year is now an assistant coach of one of the teams too. So there's, you know, they're really trying to get that going. I think that's a hard one. Um, we're probably seeing with the AFL um, women's and, and the girls teams locally mm -hmm. is that you want to try and get your female coaches involved as much as possible. Um, and it's about giving them the experience to, to do that because they probably haven't had that before. So to see Beck, um, you know, one of the players I'll play with now being in an assistant coaching role, I thought that was that was a really good thing too. Yeah, brilliant. And it's a great opportunity, isn't it, to for for women um, under the, the mentorship maybe of, mm. of people who are more experienced and probably they're going to be blokes in the club. Yeah. Um, but as long as that's... Um, identified and that there is a um, a real proactive approach to skilling them up in um, that's sort of what you'd be after what are you most looking forward to when you return so we've just got a minute and a half left um, what are you most looking forward to when you return to if if I'm so I'm assuming you can return to yeah. play yes yeah. 
think it's probably good under COVID restrictions with being a little bit um, sort of socially distanced. Yeah. But, yeah, what are you looking forward to the most? Well, I think we've been given the date of, I think it's the first week of November that we'll be playing. So that's good. Um, we're about to hear, I think, in terms of what's happening training-wise. So we haven't, we've had one run around um, a couple of months ago before the last lockdown happened. Um, so I, I think I'm looking forward to getting back into it and seeing all the, the, my teammates again, um, but just probably working on my skills a bit more. So I, I didn't get that pre-season opportunity last time. And um, Funnily enough, I was a leg spin bowler when I was a kid, so I've been trying to get that going again. So it's it's just about, I, I don't know, it'll just be a bit of fun, I think. Um, and just with the whole lockdown scenario, I think it'll be just nice to get back amongst people, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, good luck. And um, and I, did you, were you successful in your, well, I know yeah, we didn't not everything. Yeah, we didn't make finals. Um but we just missed and I think, you know, we improved enormously from, you know, the, the first time I played to the last, you know, we were we were playing really, really well. So that's what we look forward to as well, to, to, to build, I suppose, and see what, what it takes us. But I think there'll be a lot more teams this year, which is awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, for Mich Michelle, for all of that. That's awesome. Um, I love some of those insights. So, yeah, thanks heaps. No worries at all. Just press the... Stop recording. <laughs>